Hello. Thank you for watching this session on submitting your application to the Telling the Full History Preservation Fund. I'm Diana Maxwell, Senior Manager of Grants at the National Trust. Today, I'll walk you through the grant process for this fund, which will include some important email addresses to remember, how to log into our online grant system, Foundant, telling you what the eligibility quiz is, and I'll go over some tips for submitting your application. The grant process starts with an eligibility quiz, which you must pass in order to gain access to the application. The application is due December 15th, 2021 at 11.59 p.m. your local time. After the grant applications come in, they'll be reviewed and decisions will be made. All applications applicants will be notified via email on March 1st, 2022. Then the selected grantees will begin their grant period on April 1st, and they must complete their projects by March 31st, 2023. On the screen are three important email addresses to add to your address book. Notifications about the grant will go out via email to the person who applied for the grant within Foundant. So make sure that that person is the correct contact person for your organization. If anything changes between the time you submit the application and when you may be notified, let us know by sending us an email so that we can update your contact information. We also ask that you save these three email addresses to your address book so that the notifications won't get spent, sent to your spam folder. Once you're logged into the system, excuse me, once you have gotten to the login page, it'll look like this. You'll need to log into the system. If you have filled out a grant before, you likely have a login for your organization and you can reset your password on the front page there. If you have not applied for a grant, you can go ahead and set up a new account. Or if you think your organization has an account, but you don't personally, you can set up a new account as well. You may get a warning that your EIN or your tax ID number has already been used in the system, but that's okay. You can just go past that warning and set up a new account. We'll connect them on the back end for you. Once you're logged in, you should see a screen like this that lists all of our available applications. So you do need to make sure that you're logged in to fill out the application. You'll see your name up at the top right. And while you can preview the application without logging in, nothing will save on the application unless you're logged in. So it's really important that you make sure that you are logged in. The first step for this process is to take the eligibility quiz. So that's what you're gonna click first. You don't need an access code to do that. You're just gonna click continue eligibility quiz. So this is what the eligibility quiz looks like. It's required for the, this application because of the parameters of this program. They're very specific. And if your organization or project doesn't meet those, we don't want you to waste your time on an ineligible application. It's just five questions and they're all yes or no. After you submit the quiz, you'll see a screen like this and you'll click continue to go back to the apply page. If you're eligible, the application will appear there on the apply page and you can click apply to start. If you're marked ineligible, this is what you'll see on the apply page. It will say based on your answers, you're not eligible to apply at this time. If you're marked ineligible, double check your answers, check the guidelines to see what you maybe you answered that made you ineligible. And if you think that you were marked ineligible incorrectly or by mistake, send us an email. Once you have gotten to the application, it'll look something like this. And our system can only allow one email address to be linked to an application. So if you have, are working with a partner or a team of people, what you'll wanna do is use that collaborate feature, which is the blue button on the top right. You can click the collaborate button and put in the email of the person you wanna collaborate with. They'll get a link to the application and then they'll either have to log in or sign up for an account and you can work together on the application. If you have issues or questions about this, send us an email. And if you see down below on the right, there's also a button that says question list and that will get you a PDF link, a PDF download of all of the questions on the application. So you'll just scroll down to answer questions on the application. Some are open-ended, some are multiple choice and some have spots to upload documents. 
questions with asterisks are required. And if you go over the word count or the file size, you'll get an error message in red and you won't be able to submit the application. It's important to remember that spaces do count with the character count. So that's something to keep in mind. One thing that you don't have to do is fill out all of the application in one sitting. You can choose to save it and, and leave and come back. And you do that by scrolling down to the bottom of it and clicking save and then logging out or just closing your browser window. You'll get back into your application by logging back in and clicking on the house button icon on the top left to get to your applicant dashboard. And you'll see that it'll show up as edit application under the process telling the full history preservation fund and you can click back and start uh, your, get back to the work you've already done. If you go back to the apply page and start a new application, you'll lose all the work that you've done. So once you're done with the application, scroll all the way down to the bottom, make sure everything's filled out and then you can click submit and you're ready to go. Just a few tips to remember. If, you're already, or if your organization is already in the system, you might get that EIN warning and you can go past that. We ask that you save those email addresses we listed earlier so that you get all of your notifications. We also recommend bookmarking the foundant page so that you don't have to kind of search for it to go back to if you wanna leave and come back. Spaces do count in the character count. You have to answer all the questions with an asterisk and contact us if you have any questions. I will note that we won't be available on the day that the application is due after about 5 p.m. Eastern. So make sure you ask your questions early and the applications are due at 11.59 p.m. local time. If you have other questions, we encourage you to check out our guidelines or the FAQ page and we'll be updating that FAQ page as more questions come up from folks. And you can always send us an email at tellingthefullhistory at savingplaces.org. Thank you very much and good luck with your application.